Hey, what's going on guys? This is Amir from Begbrace and welcome to this quick introduction to Haskell programming language. Well, sort of. What I mean to convey is that I won't assume a lack of programming knowledge on your part. In this mini course, I will operate under the assumption that you possess a foundational understanding of programming concepts. In other words, do not anticipate detailed explanations about basics, such as data types, data structures, arrays, tuples, objects, loops, conditionals, references, pointers, garbage collection, and, you know, the whole package. Instead, I will focus on elucidating novel approaches to fundamental programming concepts, and my aim is not just to cover syntax, but to delve into the language mentality behind accomplishing the same goals. I'm also going to try to create various programs, small and medium sizes to demonstrate various concepts, and I believe that learning by doing is much more effective than studying, you know, A, B, C, and then forgetting everything altogether. And by the way, my method also works in human language. So if you learn Spanish, let's say, it would be much faster if you started to practice directly and get involved with native Spanish speakers than learning by pen and paper for decades. This is just my opinion. So this is the end of the introduction. With that being said, let's get right into it. Okay. Haskell, what is it? Haskell is a widely used purely functional language. Functional programming is based on mathematical functions. And besides Haskell, some of the other popular languages that follow functional programming paradigm include Lisp, Python, Erlang and Clojure, just to name a few. Okay, that's good and all, but what makes Haskell so special? Well, it's all about purity, immutability and lazy evaluation. These features actually bring a unique flavor to programming that you will soon come to appreciate. And of course, Haskell has a vibrant and supporting community, making it an exciting language to learn and use. Now, if you have watched my last stream, I've talked a lot about Haskell programming language. Not in the sense of explaining the language, but what I decided or what I intended to do. What got me into programming or learning programming in Haskell is Tsodding, this crazy genius Russian programmer. Tsodding actually has a fantastic channel. He programs in a lot of languages. He's actually a genius and I have no idea how he memorizes code snippets and, you know, can switch from one language to the other language so smoothly. He was the reason behind me getting uh, to start or buying actually a book on Haskell programming language and I showed this book in my last stream. Now I have read around 150 pages and I'm not going to summarize what I've learned but I'm going to give you a whole overview of the language and of course I'm going to share what I have learned so far. So let's talk quickly about history and philosophy of the language. So as we said, Haskell is a functional programming language that traces its truth back to the late 1980s. And the development of Haskell began with a group of researchers, well, actually mathematicians, who aimed to create a purely functional statically typed language with a strong type inference and lazy evaluation. So the early influences between 87 and 90, the Haskell project originated from meetings led by these researchers, Simon Peyton Jones, Paul Hudak, Haskell Curry and others. And their goal was to produce a functional statically typed language. And in 1990, Haskell version 1.0 was developed by the Haskell committee and it was released introducing lazy evaluation and strong static type. Haskell version 98 for the year 1998 actually with contributions from the Haskell community and controlled by the Haskell 98 committee, consolidated features and set a standard. And finally, a key implementation here in the Haskell programming language was the Glasgow Haskell compiler or the GHC which we're going to download, by the way, from the website, and it's going to be our main software to compile our programs written in Haskell. So it was developed by the GHC team led by Simon Peyton Jones. And a note on the side, Haskell Curry's foundation work in mathematical logic and lambda calculus significantly influenced the theoretical basis of functional programming. And now you know where the name Haskell came from. And now I'm going to give you a quick hands-on manual on installing GHC and understanding the GHC compiler. 
And step number one here on this manual is to download and install GHC. So let's go ahead and open haskell.org forward slash GHC. So as you can see, there are different releases. So the latest one was, uh, was released on November 10th, 2023, before that in October and September. So actually every month there is a new release. Once you download that, you will have it installed on your computer. And you can see here it says that GHC is the state of the art open source compiler and interactive environment for the functional language Haskell. This is of course the Haskell programming languages website, haskell.org. You have also downloads, playground, uh, you can type code, uh, you can actually click on get started and you know, start learning on your own Haskell. And um, if you have watched my first stream on Haskell, I've done that with you guys. Type Haskell expression here so you can actually type code here that's evaluating to 1150. And all of these symbols and glyphs will probably going to explain this time. If not, it's going to be the next times. Because I believe this is just the introduction and I'm going to create a full series on Haskell programming language. Now, we have a documentation section you can check out if you have any question, anything um, you want to, you know, enrich your knowledge in Haskell. You can uh, hear, for instance, some books. You can use intermediate Haskell books, some courses and some tutorials, right? Online resources, manuals and guides. So you have a full list of resources you can use to learn Haskell on your own. All right, so once you have your GHC release installed on your machine, you can verify that by, uh, let me just get out and let me show you how to verify this. You will type simply GHC hyphen hyphen version. And here you can see that I have version 9.4.7. All right, you might have a different version based on your download, but basically it's the same thing. Now to finalize this quick introduction about Haskell, let me quickly introduce you to the hello world example as we do in every programming language or framework for that matter. And let me do nvim hello.hs and as you may guess that hs is the uh, extension for Haskell language. So this program is going to define a main function. Each Haskell program should have a main function. This main function, when executed, is going to print the hello world to the console. That's the idea. So, the main is followed by double semicolon, IO, and open close parentheses like that. IO, of course, stands for input output. That's the main entry point to our program in order to be executed. Um, this actually input output function or input output this is a type signature, which indicates that this action has an effect on the outside world. All right. In this case, printing to the console. Okay. So we have our main function. Now we need this main to be equal to something to be done. Right. So in Python, you would do print. In JavaScript, you would do console.log. In Rust, you would do print line exclamation mark. And in Haskell, you would do put stir line and then what you want to print inside double quotes so in this case we'll say hello world and simply this is our application now to run this Haskell program we need to save our code and we need to exit to compile our program I will need to call the GHC our compiler followed by the name of the file and hit enter and as you can see, our program has successfully been compiled. Now, I told you that we have the GHC, which is our compiler, right? But also we have an interpreter. So to run your program, you can run it by compiling it, GHC and the name of your program, or you can run it using the GHCI, which is the interpreter. You can see that it has been loaded. Now to load it to your interpreter, you would do colon load and the name of your file which is hello.hs okay one module loaded now we can do reload good and you can type main which is your main function to trigger your main function and voila hello world is being printed inside your ghci 
Now, let me show you if I want to run the same program or write the same program, but in a different way. Um, so let's say hi or hi haskell.hs. We have said that we have our main function and this has a signature type of input output. And this main actually you can basically do like that, like we have done in um, the latest example. But what's better is to do main equal to do, and then we have to indent. Now indentation in Haskell is very critical. Usually indentation is done using spaces, not tabs. And don't think about Richard Hendricks now, you can do spaces quietly in Haskell. If you would do two spaces, you need to continue your whole program with spaces. Um, now we can say put str ln, put string on a line, hi Haskell from new vim. All right, and that's it. Now let's save and exit our program. Here I'm going to use the GHC, our Glasgow Haskell compiler to, compiler, to compile our program. Hi Haskell.hs. And you can see that the compilation has uh, been successfully made. Now, if you will take a look, we have different files. We have uh, highhaskell.exe, we have highhaskell.hi, we have our uh, Haskell file and our output file. So now we need to run our executable file. To do that, you would do dot, which means in the current directory, I need to run with the forward slash the file which is hi haskell enter now we have hi haskell from neovim all right so those are the two ways that i wanted to show you in this video how to simply print something in the console we have seen that in the interpreter the ghci and using the ghc to compile our program into an executable and run it and print eventually to the console Please let me know in the comment section below if you want to see more of Haskell. I have a lot to tell you and a lot to share with you guys. I have a lot of programs to write with you, to explore the syntax and the beauty of this, you know, it's a beautiful language. It was written by mathematicians. So the syntax itself is very concise and, you know, very logical and yeah, simply I love it. I want to share with you what I've learned so far, guys. So um, we haven't seen yet lazy evaluation, Lambda, functional programming for that matter, right? We haven't seen anything yet. So yeah, please let me know in the comment section below. With that being said, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Till then, stay safe and be well. See you later, guys.